Police body cam video shows officers pulling a woman out of a car on fire. This happened on Tuesday in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Video shows officers as they work together to rescue the woman. Officers pushed the vehicle off of its side, the smashed window, and pulled the woman out. No word yet on her condition. Police say she was the only person inside at the time. Another officer on the other side of the country also rescued somebody in danger. Yeah, this time an officer in California helped a man out of a burning home. Grass Valley police rushed to help as the fire started to grow yesterday. As neighbors called out for Corey, the man who was inside the home, Officer Jonathan Brown checked a side door and saw the man's feet. So he grabbed them and dragged the man out to safety. But it takes something inside you to, to really take it to that level. Thank God that officer, I don't know his name, but thank him so much for going to the side door and finding Corey. Corey is expected to make a full recovery. Wow, good work there. Yeah, without a doubt. All right, that does it for Channel 2 News at 4. The News at 5 begins in 60 seconds. Stay with us. Channel 2 News begins right now with breaking news. Breaking right now at 5, Mayor Sylvester Turner says he anticipates a boil water notice for the city of Houston for the next 24 hours. Nearly five hours after this mess brought parts of Houston to a standstill, we now know a contractor was doing work on a water line project when an eight-foot water main burst. And it has brought the East Loop to a standstill. It flooded the neighborhood, caused people to be rescued from the roofs of their cars, and crippled the water supply for a large chunk of the city. Yes, the impact was immediate and it's still being felt right now. Reports of no water or little water are coming in from across the city. Universities, health clinics, restaurants, businesses, even some early voting locations all closed. Sky 2 live over the scene off 610 in Clinton on Houston's east side. There's a lot of water in the streets, but for many families, nothing coming out of their faucets. And tonight, the 610, the East Loop is still closed down from I-10 all the way down to Highway 225. We have live team coverage of the citywide impact. We start with Channel 2's Bill Spencer, live in the neighborhood where that line burst. Bill. Yes, uh, Andy and Lauren, this is just a massive, massive water line break. It occurred about 12.30 this afternoon uh, as a contracting crew was working on this huge pipeline. They were repairing what was supposed to be a small leak, but during that repair, the line suddenly burst open, the water erupted, and this gigantic flooding situation began to take place. This is a 35-year-old pipeline that provides water to 50 to 60 percent of the entire population of Houston. Houston. You can see by the video here that the water came cascading onto 610, uh, creating what looked like a rushing river at times. Uh, at least 12 different vehicles stranded on 610. Uh, the water rising on those cars. Three people had to be rescued from their vehicles. Uh, high water vehicles brought in to make the rescues, rescue boats as well. The water is receding right now, but the work to bring this crisis to an end continues. Uh, but our goal is to is to move as quickly as as possible, and I've instructed uh, Public Works uh, to take all necessary steps uh, in order to uh, isolate the break, uh, to uh, shut it off, uh, to drain the lines, and to make the repairs and to do it as quickly as possible. The boil water order. How long is that going to be in place? It has to last at least 24 hours. We do not believe at this time that it'll last more than the 24 hours. <laughs> And tell me this, uh, how many people are affected literally with the, with the boil water part? I, I can't tell you for sure. I mean, basically it's 50 to 60 percent of the city. So if you just do the math on that, it's better than a million people. Back live now, we are also told that low water pressure will remain a problem for those people affected by this water main break for the next several hours at least. You can see right here on 610 that the water has receded dramatically uh, from the height of this uh, massive flooding situation. Uh, TxDOT vehicles are down there right now. They're still trying to clean this mess up. No word on when 610 will return, uh, will be open again, but we are told at least, at least several more hours 
hours. Again, that boil water alert for the city of Houston remains in effect for 24 hours. Reporting live, this is Bill Spencer, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Bill, thank you. And we have this just in. All HISD schools and offices are closed tomorrow due to the water main break. Channel 2's Bill Barajas continues our team coverage. He is live from Houston's third ward. The neighborhood, the University of Houston are still dealing with water issues, right, Bill? That's correct, and it's a beautiful day here. You take a drive down this third ward neighborhood, you wouldn't really know that there was an issue here, nothing out of the ordinary, but there is an issue, and that is the low water pressure for many of the people in these homes. In fact, this elementary school here, Lockhart Elementary, had to cancel after school programs because of that low water pressure. We also spoke to one woman, a TSU employee, who was sent home because of the water main break. She tells me they were initially put on standby as they tried to figure out what was going on. We were informed by employees that there was no water in our building. So we assumed that it was just our building. And so we started calling other buildings and we realized it was campus wide. So at that point, we received notice to just be on standby. The university eventually canceled classes. U of H also doing the same thing. The University of Houston saying they were handing out water bottles to students who needed fresh water on Twitter. We also spoke to a man in his third ward neighborhood who's lived here for about 60 years. He said the water pressure was low at home, but right now he wasn't very worried, just keeping an eye on the problem. Well, just a low water pressure. This area here never floods, so we knew something was going on wrong. You know, we didn't really know what it was, but we saw on TV that that was a water main break, so we figured it all out. Mm -hmm. I just checked my faucet, and we do have some water. And again, a beautiful day here in Third Ward. Many homeowners haven't returned home just yet, so many are unaware of the issues that are happening inside their homes with their faucets and their toilets. But again, everyone trying a, to put a plan in place together. Live in Third Ward, Bill Barajas, KPRC Channel 2 News. Bill, thank you. Live now, Sky 2 flying over the flooded East Loop there. All afternoon, Channel 2 Investigates has been taking a closer look at the water main at the center of this mess. They have learned it's part of a construction project four years ago. They've also learned from the city that the contractor involved in today's break was Harper Brothers. The mayor says that they were on site to address a leak moments before the burst. Channel 2 Investigates has reached out to Harper Brothers and their attorneys multiple times, but have not heard back. Water pressure is also low at portions of NRG Park. Right, but pre-rodeo festivities are still going on, including the World Championship Barbecue Contest. Our Hannah McKenzie continues our team coverage with the impact there. Hannah. Hey there, good evening, guys. Well, I've learned out here where there's smoke there's the barbecue, so that is good news for everyone who was kind of holding their breath, wondering or not if the cook-off was going to continue as planned. Gates just opened a few minutes ago, right at 5 p.m., and it's already pretty busy, and the air of that gorgeous barbecue is filling the air. The smell, I should say, is filling the air. The bathrooms here at Energy Park are closed, but there is no shortage of portable toilets. And despite the low water pressure, David Stone, chairman of the World Championship Barbecue Contest, tells us things will continue as planned. All of our teams are actually self-contained. They bring their own water with them. And then as far as uh, facilities, we have porta potties. We're on a parking lot. So we have to make this uh, actually turn it into a little city every year. And then anything that's served to the public or our volunteers or anywhere is going to be served in a can or a bottle. Right now, there are 254 teams competing in the cook-off, some coming as far away from as Australia. Now, if you take a look out here, what he was talking about, Mr. Stone was talking about these teams being self-sufficient out here. That is just one of the many portable water tanks that we have seen that these teams are bringing out here. So they won't be running out of water anytime soon. Now, in addition to all the cook-off fun, the carnival is still in full swing. So folks can head on out here whenever they feel like it. Reporting live at Energy Park, Hannah McKenzie, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, Hannah, thanks so much. Thankfully, as we heard from county officials, the property damage today was minimal. But if you suffer damage or know someone whose car flooded, here's some valuable information. The line that broke is a main line and not a water line that goes from a house to a water meter. That means damages would be covered by your own personal flood insurance. Today is also a good reminder that if you don't have flood insurance, it's a wise investment living in Houston. 
If your car was damaged, it should be covered by your auto insurance. The East Loop will be closed until the water recedes, so if you're driving on the east side of Harris County, tolls are currently being waived on the Beltway. You can currently ride for free from 59 all the way down to the Gulf Freeway. This includes main lane plazas along with entrances and exit ramps. We are going to pick back up our coverage of the water main break in just six minutes. Remember, for any updates anytime, go to clicktohouston.com. We have a list of the businesses, schools, and restaurants that are closed. Our team is constantly updating it. Frank is here now, and Frank, the optics of this are noteworthy because flooding in Houston, while it's sunny and blue skies out there, it's not uh, usually the way we see these You know, scenarios. I don't think even Noah would have predicted this flood. It's true. This was a tough one. I tell you, my heart goes out to those folks who were affected by it. It's just crazy out there, but you're right. It's a blue sky, triangle energy camera, 58, 59. We have west winds. That's always a nice dry wind for us. 59 in Sugarland, Conroe's at 58, Galveston at 52. If you're going to walk that dog, 58 at 6. So it doesn't change much in the next hour. 54 at 7 and then 50 at 8 and then we're going to slide right down through the 40s 46 at 9 42 in the morning and then 40 to wake up to some of you in the upper 30s but a cool one jackets certainly for the evening and tomorrow morning but we still have even more of a warm-up on the way as we head into what is I'm going to call a super weekend we'll talk more about the rodeo coming up Lauren sounds good Frank thank you we're also tracking another developing story now federal agents at headquarters of HISD and the home of the dif district's chief operating officer agents with both the FBI and the IRS spent the day seizing computers and documents Channel 2 Sally Mamdu is live tonight with what she's been able to confirm about the investigation hi Sally Hey Andy, we haven't been able to confirm much about this investigation. That's because we haven't really had any new updates from the district or the FBI, but we've talked to activists and lawmakers who tell us they weren't that surprised by this investigation. Computers and boxes of documents hauled out by FBI and IRS agents who spent most of the morning collecting evidence inside the HISD administration building. The FBI is here today to conduct a court authorized uh, legal action. Our sources say federal agents focus their attention on the third floor, home to the district's executive offices. But we later found out this investigation wasn't the only one happening. Our Sky 2 helicopter capturing this video of IRS agents at the home of HISD's chief operating officer, Brian Busby. The feds aren't saying yet what the investigation is about. However, State Senator Paul Bencourt has some idea as to why the feds were knocking on HISD's door. When you see that that type of activity, there could be corruption, and that means uh, there's tax evasion as well. Betting court is calling for a TEA takeover of HISD following a TEA report that accused the district of several violations, including the unlawful awarding of contracts going as far back as 2013. When you look at this level of of issues in the in the Texas Education Agency report, it's layers of corruption that need to be removed and um, and and that requires a change at the top which is the board of trustees and it's going to require a lot of change in the administration as well and we've reached out to the Board of Trustees today all day, and we haven't heard anything back on any response in regards to this FBI investigation. We've also reached out to the district, and their only comment is that they're fully cooperating with the agencies involved. We're live in Northwest Houston. Sally Mabdo, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Up next, we are going back live to our coverage of the massive water main break that has crippled large portions of the city of Houston. We're going to take a closer look at the impact this is having on the downtown area and your commute. Back to our breaking news story now. The widespread impact of the eight-foot water main break on Houston's east side. Sky 2 is live over the scene now where there's still a lot of water on the east loop at Clinton along the surrounding neighborhood as well. Right, and we mentioned universities, businesses, hospitals, and restaurants have all been impacted. Tonight we can confirm that all Harris County courts will be closed tomorrow. Senior reporter Phil Archer was downtown covering a trial when this all broke and the buildings were evacuated. He is live for us now with a look at water issues that are impacting the downtown area. Phil. 
Yeah, the court shut down pretty quickly, and a lot of county attorneys, excuse me, county employees got off early this afternoon when most of the buildings here in the county's downtown complex were closed because of that water main break. Now, we were in the county justice center for the opening of the Arkema trial around 3.30 this afternoon. The judge halted proceedings and announced from the bench that the building was being closed by order of the county engineer. She then recessed court and sent the jury home. Now, it didn't take very much much longer after that for the court building to evacuate and all the other buildings to evacuate. We saw hundreds of employees leaving once we got down on the street. The problem is that that water main break on the east side has lowered water pressure in this part of downtown, and that makes the county buildings fire hazards. There's not enough water pressure to fight a fire if one were to break out, not even enough to flush toilets here. They just told me to go home. Yes, sir, they did. What'd they say? They just said that uh, the water was uh, the water pipe was busted major water pipe was busted and the restrooms are no longer working so it's time to go well, the pressure's real low real low real low I tell you and if you use a restroom you're not gonna be able to flush because I did have to so I had to hold it and hold it and flush it like five times so really? that's the problem so the buildings that close today aren't expected to reopen tomorrow. And Andy, as you said, the county clerk now saying that all county courts will be closed on Friday. Reporting live downtown, I'm Phil Archer, KPRC Channel 2 News. Phil, thank you for the update. Here is a live picture now from Houston Transtar from the interstate impacted by the break. Right now, all main lanes of the East Loop are closed from I-10 down to 225. And city officials say it will stay closed until this water recedes. As the mayor said earlier this afternoon, repairs will stretch into the night. City leaders anticipate that families in the city of Houston will have to boil water for the next 24 hours. Although the mayor stressed the water supply is safe and that this is just part of a state requirement. As soon as we receive more guidance from city leaders, we will update you on that. We are following more breaking news now. Another thousand point plunge for the Dow, all centered on the deadly coronavirus and the impact to the global markets. Companies like cell phone manufacturers are warning investors of issues to their supply chains. The Dow falling nearly 1,100 points. That's almost four and a half percent. I'm going to bring in Frank now. Wow. We saw all this water today. Yep. And beautiful blue skies. Beautiful blue Not skies. Not usually how it plays Not out a drop here. of rain. Yeah. Not a drop of rain, but yet floods. Weirdest yeah. thing. I know. And it, I mean, it is interesting about the, the flood insurance would cover this mm -hmm. flood, but who would ever in the world think to think. get flood insurance for this? I mean, it's man. True. All right, so I know you're wondering about my first blue bonnet that I got the other day. Yes. It in your yard? Survived the wind. No, not me. It was oh. the click to pin down in uh, Allington from Leah, but we'll, in Colorado County. Looks healthy. It looks healthy. Mm -hmm. She said the wind did not get it and the freeze, no freezing weather got it. So Good. it's strong like the state Party. of Texas. That's right. You betcha. All right, <laughs> thanks for that. All right, lows this morning. Look at that. 26, 29, 30. I have a viewer in Huntsville said 26.1 on his thermometer. 32 in Katy, 30 in Sugarland, 32 at Bush, downtown. 36 degrees and this afternoon we made it into the 50s and 60s easily 60 61 normal 69 nice shot there blue skies out there 59 west northwest winds at three that west wind keeps us on the dry side we had a nice one in Galveston 52 there right now with the south wind at eight so upper 50s low 60s about where it's been for the better part of the afternoon the humidity is just hard to find out there 15 to 20 percent 25 in Brenham 24 at Bush 41 at Galveston it is a lovely lovely day it's going to continue to be a nice night, but it is going to cool quickly tonight, right on down into the low 50s by 7 o'clock. And then overnight, we will wind up right around 40, upper 30s to low 40s, but just go with 40 and uh, call it a day. And then tomorrow afternoon, we get right to about 75. In fact, as uh, 70, I should say, as we get, as you uh, gather in Memorial Park for the rodeo folks, I think you're going to have a lovely night. And then for Saturday morning, mid 40s, and then it's the mid 70s as we go into Saturday afternoon. In fact, for the rodeo parade, which is Saturday morning looking at uh, parade start time of 10 a.m. I think the run is at night about 9 a.m. So 8, 10 and noon 54 
to 60 to 70. So maybe a little on the cool side, maybe a windbreaker or a sweater, but it's going to be nice. Not much to talk about as far as rain or snow for us, despite the weird flood we had. Sunshine for Friday, that continues with this high pressure in place. Notice the winds go from west, which we have now, to south and southeast for Saturday and Sunday. So on Sunday, a little more cloud cover, not looking for any rain, and perhaps a 10 or 20 percent chance on Monday. But really, the rainmaker comes here on Tuesday. So that's the day to watch. Severe weather looks to be to our north. But we'll keep a close eye on it whenever you get a front, especially as we head now into spring. Uh, future cast clouds and radar continue to keep it quiet as we go into Wednesday. So your power planner, clear skies 58 at 6, 50 at 8, 44 at 10, then 40s overnight. You may see an upper 30 here and there, but no freezing weather. Pretty perfect for your hair cast. Tomorrow, looking for 70 degrees, 75, 76 on Saturday, 78 on Sunday, 80 on Monday. Then the front comes. So just as we get to 80, we start to cool it down at least a little bit. Still highs around 70 Thursday and Friday with lows in the 50s. And then don't forget, next Saturday and Sunday, those clocks have to spring forward. We will spring forward with a quick break. Stay with us. Looking towards decision 2020, Democratic presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg is encouraging Houstonians to get out and vote. This morning, he held a get out the vote rally at the Rustic on Polk Street during his sixth trip to Houston since launching his campaign, pushing for all voters to reach out to their friends and family members to go to the polls. If they ask about my campaign and what it's all about, just tell them I'm running a campaign for change, for sanity, for honesty, for inclusion, compassion, and a campaign for human decency. Bloomberg made stops across Texas this week, including Fort Worth, San Antonio, and Austin. Another Democratic presidential candidate is making his way to Houston next week. Former Vice President Joe Biden will be in town rallying for just one day before the Texas primary. It also happens to fall on Super Tuesday when 14 states and American Samoa will cast their ballots as well. Tomorrow is the last day for early voting. Most locations are open until 7 o'clock, and we've posted information where you can head out to vote on our website. Just head to click2houston.com. We'll be right back. When you buy and sell. Another check quickly of our breaking news. Repairs are underway on Houston's east side following the rupture of an eight-foot water main break just off the east loop in Clinton Road. Water is still out for neighborhoods across the Houston area. The mayor says he anticipates there will be a citywide boil water notice as a precaution. All lanes of 610 the east loop will remain closed until that water recedes. The repairs will stretch into the night and so will our live team coverage with updates on clicktohouston.com and on Channel 2 News at 6 o'clock. Some beautiful weather out there, Frank. Wow, just when you think you've seen everything. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, if you're thinking about dining out, uh, make sure you call before you go and that they have water. Eateries Good have point. to close because if they serve food, yeah, you have to stay sanitary. 54, 50, and 46. So a cool one for sure. Maybe just eat at home. That way you know you have water or not, right? All right, we've got 70, 76, 78 by Sunday. Nice weather. Perfect. Nice. Yep, enjoy it. Thanks for joining us. Nightly News is next. We'll see you at 6.